Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen and I'm here to talk about standard four of the National Health Education Standards. That standard is called interpersonal communication. And specifically it reads, students will demonstrate the ability to use interpersonal communication skills to enhance health and avoid or reduce health risks. Probably the very most important part of this standard is the fact that it is interpersonal. Interpersonal means interaction. So to be able to show this skill, uh, you really have to be able to show people interacting with each other. So it's really important when teaching this skill or when, when students are, are demonstrating this skill that they are demonstrating an interaction. And that can be done in dialogues, in videos, in a whole variety of ways. But it really needs to show more than one person talking. One of the important things in, in interpersonal communication, besides showing the interaction, is that students should show dialogues that express ideas, needs, and opinions. So that's what their dialogue is about. Their dialogues need to be clear and organized, not rambling, clear and organized. Their dialogues should or could in, in, include a rephrase of what's important in order to clarify. We all know that we don't always hear things correctly. So we need to teach students how to ask people to restate it in a non-offensive um, way. So you could say, um, I'm not quite sure I heard what you meant. Uh, can you rephrase that? This is what I think I heard. Can you let me know if that's what it really is? So those are things to help teach them. In-person communication should show appropriate and effective verbal and nonverbal strategies. One of the first strategies that it uses is I messages. I need thus and such. I need uh, you to help me because I don't know how to do this math problem. It is different than a you statement. You need to help me at this. That's a you statement. I statement comes from the statement that it is what, what I need. It's one of my needs. Communication also includes body language. And I'm sure most of you know this. It's very important because body language is part of the communication. Words are part of it, but expressions, how you hold your face, body language, it tells the recipient uh, what you're thinking. So body language that is, you could ask students, what's this? This is closed body language. I'm standing back. I may have a, a, a facial expression that is, right, I dare you to tell me something I need. So it really communicates a feeling. And so we can help students understand what the body language means and help them to see that it is part of the communication, an important part. Tone of voice is also a very important part. You can use the same words and they could be loud and angry or they could be quiet and meek and they mean different things. The words are the same. The tone of voice is definitely part of it. The other thing we need to help students with is attentive listening especially now with their phones, if they're going to really be communicating, they need to understand that eye contact is important, not phone contact. What we need to help students do to be effective in communicating their needs and their wants and their opinions is to put their phones down, number one. Have eye contact, to be open to what's being said. Past things that I just described 
are called skills cues and they are on our poster and they are ways that we have broken down the interpersonal communication skill so that you kind of have a, a list of things that you're looking for or that you need to show to be able to do this skill. You need to show dialogue between two people that express needs, wants, and opinions. You need to be clear and organized. You need to maybe rephrase what's heard to clarify. And you need to use appropriate and effective verbal and nonverbal strategies. And that breaks down the interpersonal communication. It should help you as teachers. And we, of course, need to help students understand that breakdown, that skill. Thank you very much.